Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I'm Ari Fior, Cloud Learning Journey Partner. In today's video, we're gonna cover a very interesting topic that is AWS Code Pipeline. Suppose you are a DevOps engineer and you do have your code in your uh, repo, GitHub repo. Now you want to uh, build a code by a uh, code pipeline and then you want to deploy it. Maybe you are using AWS ECS uh, service and you want to deploy there. So in today's video i'm gonna cover it, it all so after watching today's video you will have a very solid understanding like how to create a code pipeline using aws code pipeline so before we start the video i just want to talk about myself well i'm arif i do have more than eight years of experience in cloud computing and cyber security i have a multiple certification in aws azure google cloud beside that i also uh, have cissp and ccsp certification you can see my certification in the background well this channel is all about cloud computing and uh, cyber security and if you are interested in this field this channel is definitely for you so uh, i'm planning to upload a lot of videos in a very frequently manner uh, so if you are interested please like and subscribe to my channel uh, so you can watch my videos upcoming videos uh, so without further delay let's get started I have uh, logged into my personal AWS account from the search menu I will look for code pipeline So this is the code pipeline console. Currently, I don't have any code pipeline uh, and uh, code pipeline are uh, region specific. So here you can see it's uh, currently uh, showing a not virgin region. So if you're in uh, from different part of the world, you can choose your region according to it. Uh, so uh, here in the left panel, you can see it has multiple subsection. We'll go through it. Uh, so uh, first, let's start uh, with creating a code pipeline. So I'm going to click here this button, create code pipeline. So choose a pipeline setting. So first we need to give it a name. I'm going to call it test uh, pipeline. After that, uh, we need to choose uh, the service role. For the first time, if you don't have any any uh, code pipeline, then uh, it will show as uh, we need to create a new uh, service role. But if you have existing service role, then uh, it, you can uh, use that role too. So a good question could be, what's the reason why we need this role uh, for this? So whenever we are referring to this role, it's coming from AWS IAM. I am stand for identity and access management uh, for, uh, to run or execute this uh, code pipeline. The code pipeline needs some uh, certain uh, permission. Maybe this code pipeline is accessing some S3 objects or maybe some other AWS sources. So under this uh, service role, we need to define that. And once we define that, then code pipeline will have those permissions. So that's the uh, reason we use uh, service role for code pipeline. Um, Let's go with the service role and uh, new service role and it will generate uh, a default name for us. Yeah. Then allow code to create a service role so it can be used with uh, this new pipeline. I'm going to check that option too. An artifact, uh, let's go with the default uh, location, create a default S3 bucket in your account. So it will create an S3 account for artifact and encryption key, default AWS managed key will be used for that. Next, uh, we need to uh, hit the next button. So then the source provider. So this is where we can define from where our code uh, will, which one is our um, uh, source for our code. So here, if we click this drop down menu here we can see we do have uh, different options we do have github we do have bitbucket s3 ecr code commit as this is more of a test uh, pipeline i don't want to attach my github repo with here because then i have to share the credential in here and uh, uh, i don't uh, feel comfortable with that so for the sake of this video i'm gonna choose s3 because i do have few s3 buckets there so i can choose s3 in here and uh, now I have to choo choose a bucket. I do have a few buckets here. I'll choose this one and the object key. And uh, yes, I'm going to choose this one. 
and the change detection option. So here we do have uh, two options. One is Amazon CloudWatch events. Use Amazon Cloud events to automatically start my pipeline when a change occurs. And the second option is the AWS Code Pipeline. Use AWS Code Pipeline to check periodically for changes. So according to your uh, need, you can choose any one of these. I will choose AWS Code Pipeline in this option. And then the build provider. So we have provided the source. Now we have to uh, create an environment where this uh, code can be built. And uh, finally, we can push it in a destination. So for build right now, uh, we don't have any build project. And uh, here we do have two options. We can use, uh, we can add any Jenkins or we can also use AWS native solution that is uh, AWS code build. So in our case, I'm gonna use code build and uh, we have to choose a region. Uh, North Virginia is uh, good for us. And here project name. Currently I don't have any project under uh, code build. So I need to create a new project in this uh, section. So uh, for better clarity, if I uh, type uh, code build in here, for the sake of this video, I can show you this. Uh, this code build is a different AWS service. So this code build is used to build codes for us, build projects for us. So uh, I will click, uh, click this one, create project. So a new window will open in here for us. And let's maximize this one. Okay. And the project name, we can call it test project. Perfect. Okay, additional configuration. Let's click here. If we want to pass any tag, we can add those tags in here. Environment. So here we'd have two options. If we have a custom image, we can use that. Or if uh, we want to use managed image for most of the cases, for most of the pipeline that I have built so far, I always use uh, managed image that uh, AWS provides for us. So I can choose the managed image in here. So now the se uh, next option is uh, what sort of operating system we will use to build our code. So we have this option, we have Amazon Linux, uh, Windows Server, Ubuntu. It's, uh, it's up to us which one we want to use. So for the sake of the video, I'm gonna use Ubuntu and then the runtime, uh, there's only one option is standard. I'm okay with that. The image. So here we do have a few variation of the image. It's always better to use the latest one. For that reason, I'm gonna choose AWS code build standard 7.0. So after selecting this one, then we have to uh, select the environment type and the Linux EC2 or Linux GPU. Um, I always prefer Linux EC2 for that reason, and it's a test project, so that's re for, for that reason I'm gonna choose this Linux EC2. Okay, so that's the configuration and privileged. Enable this flag if you want to build a Docker image or want to build to get evil privileges. Uh, we won't choose this option for now. But if you are building a Docker image, then uh, you have to click this option. I faced this problem earlier. Uh, everything was right, but uh, I was uh, planning to create a Docker image, but the Docker image creation was uh, failing because I forgot to uh, tick this option. So it's very critical. If you are building a Docker image, you have to click this option. After that, the role name. So it is creating a role for code build. Previously, we created another role for the code pipeline. And uh, for code build, we also need to create a different uh, role. So whenever we're dealing with any sort of permission, we have to create role under AWS account, at the AWS IAM uh, console. All right, so after that, the additional configuration. So here are some uh, configuration timeout. Let's go with the default. And uh, certificate, I don't have any certificate right now, so that's why I do not install a certificate. I'm gonna go with this option. And VPC, uh, well, it's uh, it's up to us. Uh, you can build it inside a VPC or not. Uh, for this project, I won't build inside a VPC. And the compute power here, you can choose how powerful your uh, code build project would be. Uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, very least powerful one that is uh, 3 GB memory and 2 vCPU. And uh, suppose if you're uh, 
passing some environmental va variables um, then you can add those variables in here this variable will pass to your code whenever your code is being built by this uh, build project okay you can add all these parameters stuff, parameter stuff in here and then you have to build a specification so use a build spec file store build commands in the uh, yml format build spec file so uh, let's see if you have your code in your github repo and uh, under the root uh, folder you also need to have one file named as build spec yml because there you will have all the commands that need to go through to build the project so here we're specifying those uh, that uh, file name so the default name is build spec yml so we're gonna type it out in here After that, uh, batch configuration, uh, let's ignore this one and CloudWatch uh, logs. Uh, I'm gonna uncheck that because uh, this is more of a test project, but in prod or even in dev, it's very important to uh, click this cloud watch log so how it helps so if uh, during the build process if you face any sort of error or issue you can always go to the cloud watch log groups and you can find those logs from there to find out like exactly what's happening from where it's getting the error so for that reason it's very important so i am good with all this configuration and i'm gonna click continue to code pipeline So in the back end, it is creating this uh, code build project for us. So now we see that successfully created test project in code build. We can even verify it. So uh, how we can verify if we go back to the code build project and refresh this uh, console. And now we'll see we'll have, we have a new uh, code build project that is that's project that we specified a few moments ago. So here you can see all the configuration that we have uh, defined earlier. That's cool. So now we have our source, we have our code build uh, environment. And uh, now finally at the last stage, we have to uh, specify the location where we want to push our code. So let's go to this next step, deploy provider. So here we have these options to deploy our codes. So we can deploy code in app config, uh, we can deploy in Elastic Beanstalk, in S3 bucket, in ECS. So you can see we have multiple options in here. Um, currently, I don't have any ECS service running on where I can deploy code. So for that reason, I'm not going to choose that option. And also, I don't have Elastic Beanstalk running. So the only thing that I have run uh, currently under my AWS uh, personal account is the S3 bucket. So for that, I'm going to choose that. And then we have to choose a region. Not Virginia is fine with me. And then I have to choose another bucket where we will uh, push our code, our build. So after that, we can hit next and object key. Please input an object. Key. Enter the object key. You can include a file path without the uh, delimiter character slash at the beginning okay we have to must provide that and we can keep all of this as default and here we go so this is a review section so if we want to review the whole process so first uh, we uh, specified some pipeline setting then we specified the source configuration then the build action provider and finally we have specified the deploy action provider so now if we hit create pipeline it will create a pipeline for us okay so in the back end a new pipeline is uh, being created for us so here we go so here you can see the flow we do have a source the source could be your github repo could be bitbucket could be s3 bucket and uh, then uh, we do have the build environment that we have specified and finally we do have the deploy section where our code will be deployed so if we see right now in here it says let's refresh it 
Amazon S3 invalid action configuration. It failed because right now under that S3 bucket, we don't have any code or anything, um, any code there. So for that reason, it's failing. So once it's, uh, if it fails in this step, it won't pass to this step. So that's a, a good part. So if at any stage your code is failing, you can always check it from your code pipeline console. So what if you want to edit your code pipeline, maybe you want to change the source or maybe you want to change some configuration that you have defined earlier, you can do it uh, from here. So from here you can uh, click edit and for every st stage you can uh, change the configuration from here. So this is source and this is uh, for the build and uh, this is for the deployment and also one cool part is that suppose if you want to add uh, one more stage in your code pipeline maybe you want to add a manual approval stage or maybe you want to add a lambda function auto lambda function to t get triggered uh, f by this uh, code pipeline you can also do that isn't it cool congratulations guys for reaching this far of this video today we covered a lot today we first look into like what is a code pipeline then we created a code pipeline we created a code build pro um, the project so we learned a lot and uh, you should be proud of it well if you do have any questions or any doubt related to uh, this whole process please let me know under this comment section and i will reply you back in a very short period of time thank you so much guys for watching my videos it means a lot to me our community is growing and uh, very soon we're gonna hit the 1k milestone i am really excited like i know everybody is busy everybody is busy with their own life but still you are spending time for self-study and i really respect that well, uh, if you found this video helpful, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'm going to upload a lot of videos related to cloud computing, related to cybersecurity, related to IT careers. So if you want me to cover any specific topic, also let me know in this comment section and I'll cover it for you. Um, well, that's all for today. Have a great and wonderful day.